Our gospel text for today is taken from chapter 6 of the gospel of Mark, verses 45 to 52, which is a scene immediately after Jesus has fed 5,000 people with five loaves and two fish, in which 12 baskets are gathered. And now, the disciples are sent out alone in a boat. And even as they are in the boat, the wind is against them, and they are struggling with the oars. They are struggling to move forward. It is very likely that Mark is saying, that because the disciples are unaware of the Lord's presence in their lives, the way forward is arduous. The way forward is hard. The way forward is a challenge. And so they are struggling at the O's even as they struggle to move forward. In what Mark calls the fourth watch, that is between 3 and 6 a.m., when a person is at his or her weakest, it is at that time that the Lord comes to them. And this is not only a miracle, it is also what may be termed as a theophany. A theophany is the revelation of God. And this is the kind of God revealed in this miracle. Jesus comes to them walking on the water. In the Old Testament, only God could walk on water. No human being had the capacity or the ability to walk on water. So when Mark tells us that Jesus is walking on water, he's not saying that Jesus is defying the law of gravity. What he's saying is that Jesus is in the place of God and that Jesus subdues evil because demons lurk under the water. So by walking on the water, Jesus is subduing the forces of evil and is not pulled down by those forces of evil but is able to conquer them. And then Jesus makes a revelation of himself. When the disciples are frightened, when the disciples think it is a ghost, Jesus reveals himself to them through the Old Testament name of God in Exodus chapter 3 verse 14. When Moses encountered God and when Moses was being sent to the Israelites, he turned to God and said to God, when I go to the Israelites, they are going to ask me, who sent you? What name should I give them? And God said to Moses at that time, when you go to the people of Israel, say to them, I am who am. Why does God choose this name, I am? Because God wants to indicate that for God, there is no past. For God, there is no future. For God, there is only the now, there is only the present. I am is an indication that our God is a God of the present. And Jesus, when he comes walking on the water in the fright and in the agitation of the disciples, reveals himself to them in the same words in Greek, ego emi. I and then he tells the disciples something which he is saying to us, do not be afraid. By using the same self-nomination of God, Jesus is revealing himself to his disciples as a God of the present, as a God of the now, as a God who is with them, as a God who will sustain them, as a God who will not abandon them, no matter if the fourth or the third or the first watch. The God who is constantly by their side, the God who is constantly in the boats of their lives, except if they are not aware of him. 
The disciples were unaware of the Lord and that's why they were straining at the oars. Once they become aware of the Lord's presence, once they hear his words that he is God with them, the next moment they find themselves at the shore. There are times in our lives when we are straining at the oars, when we are going through one struggle or another, when there are hurdles in our path, when there are obstacles before us, when difficulties seem to abound. At those times too, the Lord comes to us walking on the water, telling us that he is a God who will not be sucked in by the evil around us. He is a God who will subdue the evil and Keep it under water and he is a God who reveals himself to us as ego eni, I am. When we become aware of that presence of the I am in our lives, then rowing becomes easy. And we find within a few moments we are at the show safe and sound. Will you hear God? Reveal himself to you, not as a God of the past, not even as a God of the future, but a God of the now, a God of the present, I am.